The electronic ignition switch system in my Sprinter camper van failed and it's been a total mission to get it sorted. So I wanted to share the decline and fail of the EIS and the possible causes as it might be useful to others. Normally when you insert the key you hear this noise. The ignition system recognises and accepts the coded key and the ignition system and central steering unlocks and most importantly you can turn the key to fire up the sprinter. When you put the key in and absolutely nothing happens then you know there is clearly a problem and in my case it was a failed EIS. The decline in the EIS was relatively quick based on the number of times I went to start the van but it was not immediate and it went as follows. It started as an intermittent fault whereby one in every five or six times I put the key in, nothing happened and the key wouldn't turn. As it was over the winter and during the Covid restrictions, I was only starting the van to turn it over and charge the battery for an hour every four or five weeks. It got progressively worse with the key only being recognised one out of five times and then it took five minutes of repeatedly inserting the key before everything unlocked and I could turn the key and it just got worse and worse. By the time the day of the annual MOT arrived, it took me 30 minutes of repeatedly putting the key in and out until it was recognised and I could start the engine. I took it to the local garage which specialises in van electronics. They replaced the EIS twice with new units, but each time the van was unwilling to initiate all of the sprinter's systems, particularly the ABS braking system, and threw up a plethora of errors. After weeks and weeks of trying new units and removing faults, the next and final step was to take it down to the Mercedes dealership in Glasgow who had full access to all the necessary firmware to repair the various electronic systems. Finding out more information about the problem and what to do about it was needle in a haystack stuff, however one of the reasons cited for failure was critical low battery voltage along with jump starting with the key in which I hadn't done and various other causes. When the problem was getting really bad and just before the MOT I'd replaced the key fob and the 100 amp hour van battery with new ones. During the lockdown when the van was sitting on the drive for month after month I had on two occasions had the low battery warning come up on the dashboard, the one where you probably only have one chance for the van to start when you turn the key. After I swapped the old 100 amp hour battery which was the original battery I found it would only charge up to about 12.2 volts which is around 50% capacity. Obviously I'm making an assumption that the low battery capacity and voltage was a key reason for the EIS to fail, but going forward I'll be making sure the van battery is always above 80% charged. And hopefully it'll avoid a repetition of the problem and any other system failures which can result from critically low battery voltage. So a classic case of thinking I was doing the right things by turning the van over every month, but abjectly failing by not checking the results of doing so, lesson learned. Hindsight is a wonderful thing and by the way this is why I don't use the OBD socket with the AA solar charger, I am steering clear of any risk to the van's electronic systems from now on. It's all good.